timing issue here which is important. The hand in the middle of the body as you block is just straight up. Don't drop it and then lift it from here straight up. The other hand comes over a little bit and then down to block, blocking a front kick from the front. So we are here. The timing of the knee, you must be careful the hand and then the knee, otherwise you'll crash into your own knee. When completing the kata from this perspective, bring the foot across and straight up. It's a hizageri, it's a knee strike. So if you try and bring your leg up this way, you will lose balance and fall over. So hold position, step and raise. Look to the front and then kick my Gary. And once again, a kick and we're going to step back with the left leg into Zenku Tsudachi. Okay, so the movement from here, you can see after the kick, the hands from the blocking position pull back, palm down, and then punch up shoulder height. You can see this punch is a little broader than normal. Rather than having a normal punch, it's not out here, just a little bit broader in terms of its position. She's now going to pull elbows in and open the back hand to strike around obi height. The power from this is in your lats. Pull, elbows in and strike. You can see the hands are the height of the obi out towards the knee. We're going to step the front foot across, the hand left arm underneath and it's a kakyuke. Pull the hands back and double punch. Once again, kata is training. It's a training pattern so we work things both sides of the body. Once again, tightening and striking. In this case, your right hand is open. Always the back leg, the hand that's open. So if your right leg is back, your right hand is open. If your left leg is back, your left hand is open. From here, we're going to perform an Ashibarai, which underlies the importance of a leg sweep in Goju Kata. The arm's going to come up and there's a Tetsuyuchi to the top of the head. Itch. This is your ki eye point in the kata, so it's important to remember this. The hand about head level, striking with the hypothena eminence, this is tetsui, hammer fist strike, and the stance is hekodach. We open and strike. Once again, as in the beginning, the line of the fist, we are away from the body, one fist, and the line of the fist is just mid-clavicle. Don't come too far across with your punch, just hold. Fingers are up as far as you can get them, palm down. And now we're going to face the other way, strike and punch. So the next movement of the kata is to step through with your right leg. We're stepping through in this direction. The other hand in front of us is just going to extend forwards and the left hand closes. So one more time. From this position, we've opened and punch, then press forwards in stance. Just keep this arm in front and keep the hand closed. We've pressed through, the next movement is a gyakazuki and it's just shoulder height. So from here, the reverse punch, straight through, not too high, not too low, but just flat from the shoulder. Okay. The final sequence in the kata here is to step your left foot over just past, just in line to the outside line of your right leg. We're going to turn the body, pull back into Neko Ashidach and find the last part of the movement. This is a very difficult movement and you must drop your weight down. The final part of the movement is a pivot on the right with a Maishyuke. The block, the hand comes back, and each press. Nail that. Okay, so 
In terms of detail of the, the last part of the kata, we're in Sanchin, we've done a reverse punch shoulder height, just aiming towards the outside of the shoulder for this movement. We step the right leg. When we do that, we just simply keep our right hand in place. So when Malvina Sensei steps, her hand stays where it was. She now turns her body, the other hand comes out, and she pulls both hands back to the side. These arms are one fist distance away from the body. We have a right angle, straight across and straight forwards. Don't have the hands on the body, just slightly away. Finish the Maishuke and press.